Hello everyone, this is Mr. Caviani, and in this video we're going to specifically look at the relationship between mass, weight, and the normal force. By the end of this video, students should be able to explain the difference between mass and weight force, and can calculate the mass or the weight of an object given the other. And you should also be able to calculate the normal force on an object for various scenarios. To begin, let's think about how mass is different from weight. Now, in English, we use these words almost interchangeably, which is why it can be so difficult to think of them as separate items, but they are. The mass of an object speaks literally about the amount of stuff or particles that it's made of. We can think about this like the amount of atoms, protons, and neutrons that make up an object. On the other hand, the weight of an object, or its weight force, is the force exerted on that object due to gravity. So weight is actually not a measurement of how much stuff something's made of, but of how strong the force of gravity is pulling on that object. In terms of location, mass is independent of location, right? The mass of an object speaks to how much stuff it's made of. It doesn't matter where the object is, it's made of the same stuff no matter where it is. Now, on the other hand, gravity is not the same everywhere. And so the weight of an object is dependent on the force of gravity exerted on that object where it is. So for example, on Earth, uh, the Earth causes an acceleration due to gravity of 9.8 meters per second squared. That's sort of a measurement of how strong the force of gravity is on Earth. By contrast, on Mars, it's only about 3.7 meters per second squared. And this is because Mars is significantly less massive than the Earth. You can see the mass is listed below here. So because the force of gravity is much weaker on Mars, one person with a mass of 50 kilograms on Earth, right, would have a weight of 490 newtons on Earth, but that same person would only have a weight of 185 newtons on Mars. And so we see here that the weight of an object does vary by location. Specifically, it varies by the force of gravity. In terms of how we measure both of these quantities, the base SI units for mass are kilograms. While not an SI unit, you often hear pounds used in, in the United States, for example. So when we talk about our weight in pounds, right, a lot of us say, oh, I, I weigh 130 pounds. We're actually not talking about our weight. We're talking about our mass. We're using a unit that describes mass. Kilograms in the metric system, and pounds in the imperial system. And so because weight is actually a force, right? Weight is the force of gravity. Weight has the same units as any other force. Weight is measured in newtons, which we abbreviate with a capital N. Now, although these are separate terms, there is a relationship between the mass of an object and its weight. Let's take a look at the next slide to see how this relationship is quantified mathematically. All right, what you see on the screen in front of you is Newton's law of gravitation. And I've written this out specifically for in the interaction between two objects, the Earth and any object in particular that we're looking at that's on the surface of the Earth. We can use this equation to quantify in Newtons how strong the Earth pulls on any given object. Given the mass of the Earth, the mass of that object, and in this case, the distance between the two objects, which we can approximate as the radius of the Earth. Now, g is something called the universal gravitation constant. Uh, this is a constant that was developed based on experimentation uh, and demonstrated to be true for any objects in the universe that exhibit a gravitational force on each other. So we're going to use this same equation later when we study the orbit of planets and other celestial bodies that act via gravity. But for now, we're using this equation specifically to talk about the force that the Earth exerts on any object on Earth. I'll go ahead and list the values for g, the mass of the Earth, and the radius of the Earth, since these are known quantities. Now, don't worry, you'll never be asked to memorize these, and these values are listed on the AP Physics 1 equation sheet. But for this exercise, what I'm going to do is I'm going to then now combine g, the mass of the Earth, and the radius of the Earth squared, right? Because these are all constants, I can separate them from the small m mass of the object to get just some big constant 
times the mass of the object. And so what actually happens is if I lump all of these terms together, this is actually what we call little g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. So if you were ever wondering where little g came from, right, 9.8 meters per second squared comes from this equation. It comes from the fact that this occurs for objects on Earth, right? This value is specific to Earth. So we use the mass of the Earth, the radius of the Earth, and g, the universal constant. So what that means is, if I take all of that and let that be little g, then I can write my equation like this. So we can simplify this by saying that the force that the Earth exerts on any object on Earth can be set equal to little g times the mass of that object, or as you'll often just see it abbreviated, mg. And so this is how we will quantify the gravitational force or the weight force of any object when we're solving problems. Let's take a look at an example where we can apply this equation.